How's it going, everybody? Nathaniel from RC Inside here, and today I am going to be reviewing the Rubik's Perplexus 3x3 Fusion. Now, this is different from the 2x2 Hybrid. The cube itself is the same physical size, but as you can see, this one is a 3x3 rather than a 2x2. Uh, the other difference about this versus the other Perplexus Rubik's Hybrid is that the other one is, was a true Rubik's Cube. This is a 3x3x1. In other words, it has three sections that turn. It does not turn in this direction. I cannot turn these. Uh, so it's just three uh, turning three by three squares, uh, which means to solve the puzzle aspect of this is very easy. You can see, unlike the other perplexes, it does actually line up blue, red, green, orange, yellow, and white. So it is a true Rubik's Cube in that sense, uh, but it's very easy to line up, much easier than the other perplexes Rubik's Cube. So let's get talking about this perplexus. This perplexus has 225 obstacles or uh, numbered sections on the track. That makes it the longest perplexus to date. It also has no checkpoints, which means you need to go 1 to 225 without failing, uh, which would also make it, again, the longest ever to not have checkpoints. Uh, so when you buy this, you're thinking you have a substantial challenge on your hands. There is a lot to talk about with this perplexus. Uh, and overall, I don't love it that much. So the first thing I want to focus on some of the positives. I really appreciate that they went for something so big. 225, I'm glad that they stepped it up a notch over their previous. 125 was the largest previously with the Perplexus Epic. Uh, the next thing that I really like is the fact that the colored sides do in fact line up. That was great to me. That's uh, an improvement over the other Perplexus Rubik's Hybrid. Uh, and this is also so much easier to spin. There is no difficulty spinning this here. And so the fact that they went for the one by one by three to get the really easy spinning, uh, I think that was great. Uh, so I'm a big fan of those additions overall. Um, that's about all I have to say that is good about this, unfortunately. Uh, First, I'll highlight a few of the unique obstacles, which th that's part of the problem is this doesn't really have anything unique. Uh, so there's a couple unique drop sections. If I had to pick a side that was my favorite, this top yellow part is the most unique uh, and interesting with a bunch of these uh, different, uh, they're not necessarily wallless sections, but these indented track sections where the marble rolls through it. Uh, Particularly, there's this section here that's a dip and then a second dip and then you flip into the uh, the wall there. Uh, there's also a few, I guess, quote unquote drop sections uh, up here. Probably one of my favorite obstacles on the course is right uh, on the left here in this quadrant. Uh, you come up and you have to flip it like that and then uh, across the side. It's an obstacle that I haven't really seen before in a perplexus set. And then there's also a few other sections like that, like uh, like here, uh, red comes around and uh, and it comes around here and drops into the yellow there. Uh, the biggest issue with these drop sections is they'd be challenging uh, in a regular perplexus, but they're situated every time right by the outside of the uh, cube. And so there's really not much margin for error because you're not going to fall off because if you mess it up, you just hit the outside of the cube and you're safe. Uh, so they're just not that challenging, which kind of takes away some of the fun of the uniqueness. Uh, and so going on to that lack of challenge, this is not a very difficult perplexus for its length. Uh, I personally think it's easier than the 2x2 Rubik's Cube, uh, but the difficulty comes from things that I find really frustrating. The difficulty is not in maneuvering the course of the obstacles. The difficulty is in the fact that it's 225 obstacles with no checkpoints and the inner maze that this is. I mean, if you look, I don't know how, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do a walkthrough for this yet because you can't see what on earth is going on inside there. Like, it's just a mess. And so half the challenge is in me figuring, oh, well, how do I line this up? I can't see what I'm doing because I'm lining it up in the middle of this mess, right? And so that's not fun to me. That's not what Perplexus 
uh, was supposed to be about. The struggle was not to try and figure out, oh, how do I line up the track? I can't even see where the ball is. Uh, the struggle was supposed to be maneuvering difficult obstacles. And this doesn't have difficult obstacles. It just makes it insanely hard for you to figure out where you're going the first five times. And then once you've memorized where you're going, it becomes no challenge again. Uh, and so, so I guess my biggest gripe with this is I feel like this was a missed opportunity. Uh, there could have been room for so much more variation. I mean, we have a bunch of these uh, sections here, uh, these little loop sections where you flip from one side to the other. Every single one of them is the same. Could you not? I know, I know it's a classic perplexus obstacle, but could you not like throw in a different shape or pattern or size or something to keep it interesting, right? Again, this entire, almost this entire course is just flat track sections because it's a cube. And so there's not a whole lot of uh, diverse track sections. There's not one single section that is wallless. There's a couple transitions here. Like you notice, like I got a transition from yellow to green here. Uh, that can be a little risky. You can fall off the, the left-hand side there. There's a couple places like that where you can fall off. There's another uh, one on the white section up here where, you know, again, you, I, I'm not, yeah, this, this one white to green here, where if you're not careful, you come over there, you fall off. But that's about it. There's no, it's all these uh, flat tracks and there's not a single section of this course that doesn't have a wall. I think that's really disappointing that there's not a single wallless section. Like, like that's a classic reflexus obstacle to only have one wall to deal with and to hug one side of the, the track. There's none of that here. The walls are really low everywhere. So there's a small margin for error, but there's no wallless sections. And that to me is just a huge missed opportunity. The whole thing, there's a huge missed opportunity to put in some unique obstacles, more advanced obstacles. And instead they just went for length and, and not knowing where you're going. I should note, there's actually one more unique obstacle on the white side here. Uh, you come down uh, on this one wall section, you drop around here, flip it, and then roll down into this uh, this little gully there. That's the other unique obstacle. But yeah, just so much wasted opportunity in this perplexus, if you ask me. Uh, so I think that's about all I have to say on it. I covered the unique obstacles. I covered my issues with it. Uh, my last issue with it is just how hard it is to get the ball to the starting point. This is such a thick maze. It's impossible to... Ah, oh, there we go. It's really difficult to get the ball to the start. Um, uh, it's really frustrating. And so that's another uh, one of my complaints with this set is just how difficult it is to get the ball to the starting point, which should not really be a challenge in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, those are my overall thoughts on this, guys. Like I said, I covered my things that I didn't like about it. I covered some of the positives. Huge missed opportunity from Perplexus here in my opinion, though I really do like how easily this spins. Overall, if you're a perplexus purist, you'll probably like this a reasonable amount just because it does feel a little bit like more of a classic perplexus, but it doesn't offer too much of a challenge either. I'd say I put it around perplexus twist level just because of the length and the fact that there's no obstacles, uh, but it's much easier to complete than uh, than perplexus twist would be if you were trying to, if you're doing perplexus twist without checkpoints. It's kind of in that range of difficulty: perplexus twist, perplexus original, nowhere near the epic or the death star or even the other smaller rubik's cube nowhere near that level of difficulty so for enthusiasts maybe who like rubik's cubes this is probably also not a bad introduction to the perplexus series but again i feel like you're going to get pretty frustrated with just how easy it is to get lost here and it might turn you off from the series as a whole overall if you're looking to buy this i probably wouldn't recommend it unless you're an avid collector there's many other perplexuses out there that are worth buying, and uh, this is not high up on my list, unfortunately. So that is my review, guys, for the Perplexus Rubik's 3x3 Fusion. I hope you found this review useful. As I mentioned earlier, I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do a walkthrough for this yet. I've made it to uh, the second to last obstacle on this course, which is like the hardest one here with this drop section. Uh, and so I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do the ops, the, the walkthrough just because like, it's so hard. I mean, the first level here isn't too bad, I don't think. Uh, but otherwise it's so difficult to see where you're going, like what's going on. Um, I'll try this. 
yeah, like it's really, I mean, you kind of could see, but anyway, uh, it's hard to tell what's going on. Uh, so I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do the walkthrough yet, uh, but I am going to be having a walkthrough video coming soon. So uh, if you like this video, found it useful, click the like button down below. Subscribe so that you can see the walkthrough as soon as it comes out, if that's something that you're looking for. And also, I'm going to be having walkthroughs and reviews for the other new Perplexus Go sets coming out. I'm just getting those today. Uh, so yeah, subscribe if you're looking for any of that stuff. And with all that said, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one.